Hey guys, welcome back. Um, we're up at the garage. Finally got some time to come up and work on the car some. Uh, we got uh, cool. We got some cool stuff to show. We got the rear end back from uh, the shop. We put some 355 gears in it. Uh, some goodies there as well. Uh, and we're going to be putting the uh, passenger side of the motor, uh, the top part of the motor, back together. Um, and then I'll be showing you guys that as well. Uh, but real quick, uh, let me get you flipped around here, and I'll show you the rear end. All right, here's the rear end. Um, and it's kind of a budget build for now. It's still 28 spline. Uh, but we're gonna just roll with it now. I have a 97 Cobra belt, um, Cobra housing, 88 Cobra housing that I'll be planning on building later. Um, but we're going just kind of cheap route to get it up and get the car rolling. Um, but it does have three inch studs on both sides there. We added this cool, I picked this up um, with the 97 bell housing, saline diff cover uh, <clears throat> as well. But it's 355 gears. The reason why I went 355 gears was because of the transmission. Um, Built by Power by the Hour. It's got the 4R200, and they suggest 355 um, because the transmission is basically a three, uh, three speed, one, or excuse me, four speed, one, two, three, and then fourth is overdrive. Um, right here is pinion flange uh, for 11, 11 to 13 car. That um, is great because now all we have to do is shorten the drive shaft. We don't have to have anything welded. Uh, we'll, take, we'll take it to probably Marietta Joint and Clutch. Um, they said they can hook me up pretty good there, so we'll have to take the car down there, have them measure, cut the trans, or excuse me, the drive shaft down to where it needs to be, um, and get it rebalanced, and then basically just to plug and play, it'll blow up to the trans, it'll blow up to the rear end, um, and we won't have to do anything else as well. We'll have to have a painting flange welded onto the drive shaft, or have to buy a custom drive shaft. Uh, but, so that was there, and we'll be putting solid bushings in this for now. Uh, so I had the guy press his out for me, um, he did he gave me a good deal. And then over here, as you can see, we have the driver's side already back together. Um, we'll be moving this back to 12 o'clock and then we'll be putting the um, passenger side together. Uh, we have Boss 302, we have Boss 302 intake cams, Gen 2, uh, stock Gen 2 exhaust cams, Gen 2 heads, Timing is all the same. Um, boundary, oil pump, and, can and crank sprocket. Uh, and then everything else, new guides. We've got new guides here and here um, as well. I went ahead and picked some of those up just to go ahead and have it done. Um, but we're going to be doing the same thing. We have uh, bought new lifters and stuff like that as well. Uh, but uh, we'll be showing you the process of putting this side together here. And then again, Gen 3 block, Gen 3 block, Gen 2 oil pan, pickup tube, oil pump housing, uh, and everything like that. Okay. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment on the post and I'll get to you guys as soon as possible. All right, guys, what we're going to be doing now is we'll be putting the lifters and rockers in. Um, and then we'll be, after that, we'll put the camshafts in, put the caps back on, snug them down. Well, We'll turn the um, cams where we need to be to get them lined up. Uh, and then we'll tighten the cam caps down. Um, and then we'll move on from there. So, lifters and rockers. Um, so these are like the GT3 feeds. You got a little extra thing allowing oil to come through them. Um, these are just the stock uh, rocker arms. Uh, pretty simple. They just snap together like that. Uh, and then you'll slide them down in um, each individual hole.
done with those. Pretty simple, uh, pretty simple and easy install there, um, especially when your cams and everything's out, um, out of the way to begin with. Um, but again, we're gonna be putting Boss through the two intake cams and up top with Gen 1 um, cam phaser and then Gen 2 exhaust cam with a Gen 2 exhaust uh, cam phaser. Uh, but I'm gonna clean up the um, I'm gonna clean up the stock uh, Gen 2 cam, get it cleaned up, and then we'll install the cams uh, without the cam phasers on first uh, to get them properly, get them close to lined up where they need to be for timing wise. And then we'll come back and we'll uh, put the cam caps uh, on and snug them down to where they need to be. And then we'll get the front end put together. All right, guys, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put, um, we're gonna lube these cams up. I'm gonna use some of this uh, engine assembly lube. We're gonna lube these cams up and then uh, we're gonna put them in. Uh, there'll be a way we're gonna wanna turn these cams. Uh, if you see right here, they're gonna be a way we're gonna wanna turn those. Uh, that'll get us pretty close to where the timing needs to be um, on these <coughs> for the, tam the cam phasers. Uh, so when we do that, we'll get, uh, uh, that way we, we won't have to turn the cams much, uh, just very little, if any, uh, in order to put those cam phasers on with the chains already on, ready to roll. So we're just gonna move this up, move these up here. And then I always try to be as generous as possible with the engine lube. Um, there's no, obviously there's, you can never have too much, or rather too much than not enough on this stuff. And then just rub it in. Boss 302 cam. I uh, got the, I don't know if you can see, but put the new filter, got a new filter in it as well. Again, same process. We're gonna uh, leave, leave the journals up and then leave the. Sure that the half the cutout is on the bottom, and same with the bottom rail. You want the cutouts at the bottom. Um, now these go in a specific order. Um, be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This would be technically one. Okay, that is important. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and just get this one lined up where it, uh, where it needs to be. 
needs to be here. So on this side, we're gonna use this side over here on the driver's side. Driver's side, we use the L. Passenger side, we use the right, the R. Um, that's just how Ford refers to left and right on these motors. But we wanna be, we wanna have this R. Actually, that's about perfect. Right about there. That's where we want it down, sitting straight up and down. There actually, and that'll be close enough. We'll tighten these down on the cam. We'll get those tightened down there. Uh, <clears throat> then we'll do the same thing. Uh, we'll get it where it needs to be close um, on the intake cam. All right, guys. I'm gonna pull out the timing chain, the smaller, the secondary chain, I should say. And so. On the intake cam, we want the double, the double, uh, we want to double the dot on the intake phaser, intake phaser over here. We want the two dark ones on the intake side. So two dark ones will be, and you'll put the intake mark right, put the intake mark right in the middle of the two black marks there. And then you'll put the one black, you'll put the one black mark in line with the exhaust. Oops, that's off just a little bit there. We want it on just drive on there. Off this too. There we go. There. So again intake two and one in the middle and then exhaust you're gonna put uh, the one right on the black and then what we'll do again we're gonna line up the, the R is gonna be on the top R for drivers or R for right. I'm try to slide these on at the same time. And I'm gonna shove this down under. I didn't put in the other one yet. So I'm gonna slide it like this. Just so we can slide these on and see how far we're off. quite but we'll be let me look at the holes here yeah so this one over here is dead on this one the cam's gonna need changed a little bit but it twisted on us what we'll do This nice big guy. You can use a wrench, crescent wrench, or you can use, uh, or you can use. Uh, MMR makes a tool, a nice tool for it. Um, as well. That's gonna be pretty close to where we're gonna want it. 
And so we'll tighten down. We'll tighten down these now. And then the cam cap bolts, and then we'll move on to tightening up the cam phasers to the cam. All right, guys, so here's at, um, motors, this is at 12 o'clock. Uh, so when we do the driver side, obviously the chain's in the back. We wanna turn this back to nine o'clock, around nine o'clock. That way it takes the slack and everything out of the chain when you go to do that. Once you click this down, you're gonna rotate this back to 12 o'clock. It looks like it's beyond 12 o'clock. It's not, my motor just sitting a little crooked on the engine stand. Um, but up here, timing marks on the timing mark. Down here, timing mark is on the timing mark there. As you can see, boom, timing, timing there, good. And then up here, you see, L for left side right there is where it needs to be. The back side might be a little hard to see it, um, but right in here, as you can see, right there, two darks with one in the middle, and then one dark, it's kind of hard to see, one dark down there, it right on okay but uh, we're going to put the camera back up here we'll get a good angle at this we're gonna put this on this is gonna have to be adjusted a little bit it rolled over we we'll might have to adjust it um, while I'm putting it on to like get the bolt holes line up to be where it's at time but as you can see right right there is where it needs to be um, so Bear with me as I do this by myself. It's a little easier if you have two people, um, but sometimes you're by yourself and you gotta get it done. So here we go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put these cam cap bolts down. Um, I personally like to start from the center, get them, just to get them snug down enough to where they're seated, and then we'll go down after we do all that, we'll go ahead and torque them to the ARP's specs. Tighten these down. These are gonna be 90 foot pounds, or not, excuse me, not foot pounds, 90 inch pounds there. So we're gonna tighten these up. There. And then once we do that, we're gonna tighten down those ones up there. 